So first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to be able to speak with you. And today I wanted to share our experience at the University of Cambridge about uh, data sharing and how we incentivize our researchers to do that. So hopefully, since some of you are also interested in this, we'll be able to then exchange our views and perhaps share some common practices on this to see what's, what's working best for researchers. And myself, I'm part of the Open Data team. I work, I'm shared between the Research Operations Office and the University Library. So I did my PhD, but now I'm working as a research support. So hopefully understanding researchers' perspective also helps me to maybe talk to researchers better and understand what are the problems with data sharing. So just to tell you about the structure of my presentation, I will give you a quick overview of what we are doing. And perhaps afterwards, uh, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to take them and we can discuss during coffee breaks. So I'll give you a quick overview of our website for research data management. I will tell you about briefing sessions about research data sharing that we are doing at the University of Cambridge. Then I'll tell you about the series of workshops and training that's available to our researchers, about our University of Cambridge data repository, and I will finish about other ways of engaging researchers with the open data agenda. So first of all, I wanted to introduce you to our website. So it's a very, we try to have it with a very short uh, link name also, so researchers can easily memorize when we go and talk to them. So it's named www.datacamesuk. And we created this website as a one-stop shop for all, for researchers and hopefully all they need about research data management. And the reason for this is information is often fragmented. Very often you would have bits and pieces everywhere, but there is not a single resource that would guide the researcher through all possible resources available to them, all possible training and support that they might want to use to share their data. Therefore, we created this website. We provide a lot of information about how to manage your data properly, about the support available, about information about data repositories that's available for them and how to use them, also about funder policies and so on. So researchers seem to quite like the website. We've seen that there are a lot of visits to the site, so we hope that it's quite functional. And we're also organizing a lot of briefing sessions for researchers. And just to tell you what's that, and basically in the UK we are quite lucky in a way that our funders require data sharing. So there are more and more mandates for data sharing. So researchers are sort of aware of these. That's why they are welcoming our help and they are welcoming our sessions, information sessions about what's, what's wanted from them, what's required, what are the incentives, what are the benefits of data sharing. And most importantly, we also tell them what's the help available at the University of Cambridge. So what we can actually do to assist them with their data sharing. And just to give you this graph, we were talking to different researchers at various departments. We are also organizing some sessions centrally by the university. So these are our different meetings. And in total, it was in the middle of May. So now it's about 900 researchers that we managed to speak to. And sometimes we've been doing presentations like every day and we had everybody coming, wanting to talk with us, but that's actually very helpful because we come to meet and understand our researchers, and I will talk about it later. And I think why it's also important to really talk to your researchers is also because during this session we also understand the potential <coughs> problems about data sharing. So what we are trying to do, we are assembling also a list of frequently asked questions from researchers, and then we are doing different sort of consultations with researchers, how we might be able to help them address these questions. And sometimes we're actually feeding back these questions to funders. And we got some feedback from one of the funders within the UK, and they actually quite appreciated the fact that we were able to feed back to them questions to the, from our researchers about data sharing. So I think having this dialogue with your researchers and understanding their needs and their problems is actually really helpful. You can get their trust, and hopefully researchers will not perceive us anymore as a burden, but actually as, as people who want to really help them with what they need to do. And just to let you know about some feedback we got from our researchers, so actually people, some of the people at least, got actually quite excited about, about the whole agenda. So we had some researchers who would clearly say that they are fascinated about the subject and they think about pursuing this for their personal career. And some others, they actually approached us and asked whether they can be also involved in disseminating information about uh, research data sharing, if they can help us organizing training. So that was actually quite a lot of positive feedback. And what we are also doing, just because there was a lot of people who actually voluntarily expressed their interest in all this uh, agenda of open data and research data sharing, we've created a program 
of research data management ambassadors. And basically what we are doing, we advertise a program across the whole university that whoever is interested in this area of research data management, they can come to us and we'll tell them basic information about research data management. So basically every librarian, every PhD student who would like to be an ambassador of research data management support can be equipped with some basic skills of research data management to know where to look for sources of help, what has to be done, what's the help available at the University of Cambridge. And in this way, even with such a fragmented and big university as the University of Cambridge, we managed to create a network of research support ambassadors who can now help other researchers within their departments on how to deal with different aspects of research data management. And I think it also helps to support their professional development and career because they are equipping themselves with some new skills they can put on their CVs and, of course, learn more about other aspects of research. And we're also organizing a series of other events and workshops, and I'll talk about this a little bit later. And additionally, we're also providing assistance with data management plans preparation, because that's a new thing, new demands from more and more funders. For example, you heard today about Horizon 2020. Researchers need to prepare data management plans, and often they don't really know how to do this, how to go around this, what they should write in their data plans. So we're also offering this support in how to write nice plans, what you should consider in writing these plans. And we provided all the information about training available at the university on our website, so researchers can go browse and see what's available to them. And additionally, we also uh, offer training on demand. So in, if somebody realizes that suddenly need a training or they need some advice on a particular aspect, for example, how should I backup my data or how should I prepare a data management plan, they can simply fill in this form and will be able to come to their department or meet with them and help them with whatever aspects they need the help with. And of course we provide assistance with data repository choice, so we don't want to impose on our researchers that they have to choose a particular repository, we just tell them what, should be, what they should consider if they are choosing a data repository, what might be the most beneficial for them in choosing where to store their research data. But of course we also, uh, because some of the researchers would trust the University of Cambridge as we are their home university, we also provide our own data repository. So what researchers need to do, they just click the button to submit their data. And this leads them to a simple form where they just have to indicate what's the title of their data, what are the authors of their data. So we try to make it as seamless as possible for researchers. And with a very simple dragging and dropping, or by browsing for the file if they prefer, they can upload their file to us and we'll be able to provide link to this data in the university repository. So just because it's simple, because we tested a couple of variations of these forms recently and we realized that just because it's seamless, they can easily drop their files to us. Just within last month, we received about 30 data submissions, which was more than we expected. And we think that researchers really get involved in the agenda and they are more and more actively sharing their research data with us. And just to tell you about a couple of more ideas about how to engage researchers with open data agenda and what we are doing at the University of Cambridge. To, for example, involve PhD students or academic researchers who might be not so close to the open data agenda, we are organizing repository name competitions. So we don't want to call it the University of Cambridge Data Repository. It's pretty boring. We thought that maybe they will feel more involved if they can contribute to the name of the repository. And we are organizing sessions, information sessions open to everyone once every two months. And we are also preparing case studies. So, and coming back to the fact that it's very important to know your researchers and what they are doing, it's actually if you know them, you know who is very good at data sharing and perhaps you have some interesting case studies at your own university to be able to talk about. So that's how we came across about researchers who are actually already actively sharing their data and they see a lot of benefits of data sharing. So writing such a case study, doing workshops with such researchers that can actually say, I'm your colleague and I'm sharing my data, why wouldn't you share your data? It's actually really having a lot of positive feedback from our researchers. And we are also developing these frequently asked questions, as I mentioned before, together with our researchers. So in this way, we also hope that they know that we are listening, we are getting feedback, and we try to help them to address their pressing issues. And just to tell you final things, we are also doing dedicated sessions at individual departments and research groups if they need some help. And we are also doing regular workshops. So for example, one of our researchers in the computer lab, they develop software 
to help others to share, to keep track of their research data. So these guys, they actually said, hey, we are happy to make it open to other researchers. How about you help us organizing workshops further? So that's what we are doing with people who want to share their data. We are also showcasing these case studies. So we are helping them to organize workshops for others and tell the others about the resources available. We are doing workshops or open access licenses because that's quite difficult. Researchers don't understand how to control the access to their data. We are organizing open data panel discussion that will be later in November. And there are many more ideas to come, like for example, how researchers can use content mining in their research and many others. And we are communicating all this by a regular newsletter to our researchers. So that's all from me. If you have any questions, I'm happy to try to take them now or we can discuss them later during the coffee break. Or if you'd like to email them to me, you can use this email address info at data UK. And we also have a Twitter account, which is also a good way to communicate with your researchers, I think. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. Well, I have, I have two brief questions. Uh, one would be, are you a librarian as well? Sorry? Are you a librarian as well? Or uh, is it done by a library unit? So I'm basically sure, and that's also what the university recognizes, and I think it's quite a good idea, that it cannot be done solely by one organization within the university. So myself, I'm actually physically shared between two different places. I spend two days, of my, two days a week at the university library working with the people there and three days a week for the research operations office which basically gives the support for grant applications and in this way you can really understand the grant application process so basically we are also disseminating information to researchers that they should budget research data management costs within the grant application that they should apply uh, put data management plans within the grant applications but we are also collaborating with other organizations within the university for example university information services so we really try to make it very like, across the whole institution, make everybody involved. We have a working group and then representatives from each group are being jo joining together once every two months and feeding back to the project. Have you been uh, promoting this uh, open data for a long time already? Or is it That's actually a very good question. So the open access agenda by itself has been in Cambridge for quite a while and has been quite widely disseminated so our, I think our open access processes to make publications so openly available it's quite well developed. Open data was a bit left behind just because we have a lot of some political issues at the university but also as you mentioned before it's it's much more a complex issue so we first wanted to understand our researchers point of view before we actually start mandating anything to understand the problem and their point of view so actually I'm in my role only from January this year and when I joined we didn't have a website, we didn't have, we had the repository but it wasn't updated and everything. So actually within a short time if you want, if you have a team that really wants to do something, if you do it well, if you coordinate your efforts, I think you can do a lot. So I think all this what I presented is about six months of, of, of work. Any, any questions Bożena Michalska from uh, Tony University Library. I have a question concerns uh, this space because I found that you collect data on this space system. We have also the same. Mm -hmm. My question is, uh, because we collect now only publications, but I heard that this space is very good for, for data sharing. So uh, need we, uh, do we need uh, uh, implement two of these space uh, systems in, in, in our university, one for publication or one for data, or we need only one and they, there is a possibility to divide these collections. So you can collect both. In our university we are collecting both publications and research data in the same repository, okay. so in the same DSpace, and you can actually have different categories of research outputs, because obviously it's not only research data, it's not only publications. Some people want to upload presentations or some other types of research that they want to share with us. So we are accepting all these different types of outputs. But that's a very good point because um, some other universities I'm aware that they are using this space and they have two separate ones, one for publications, another one for research data. For us, it would just didn't make a difference, so we decided to use a single one. What with metadata? So metadata is all stored there. We have, of course, a backup system for data, so the data is actually being backed up somewhere else. It's, not, it's just metadata which is physically stored on our DSpace system, but we are using them for both, both for publications and for research data. 
Yeah. Pablo, can I ask you an issue to Pablo and his Osmai? So actually my question was about metadata, because I understand that you can take anything in any format, but uh, what about metadata? Would they depend on the, the data type or, 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 or format or whatever? Do you, do you care about this or not? That's a very difficult question. I think it's a challenge for the community also. What, what file formats do we accept? What file formats will be accessible in perpetuity? Because one of our funders, and actually that's also a good thing for the whole community to think about what will be the long-term use of your data. And that's what also we before we discussed the case study about different types of data collated over the years. What happens? How can you reuse such data? So that's actually, it is indeed a problem. And for now, what we tell to our researchers that if possible, we encourage them to use open source file formats. So then hopefully these file formats will be longer term available in the future, not proprietary file formats. However, sometimes it's not possible. Myself, I did my PhD in life sciences and I've used four different types of microscopes to collect my images. Each one of them was working just with a particular type of software generating this particular type of files, which can be opened with this particular type of software. So if you see what I mean, that's sort of a circular argument. You cannot demand on your researchers that they always make all their files available in open source format. So we accept everything, but we of course realize that there is a lot of disciplinary differences.